Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at Kepler's third law. This is probably the toughest of Kepler's three laws. It's probably because it's the only one that requires an equation. And so I have a couple example problems we're gonna be looking at today with Kepler's third law. So with the other laws, I wrote out a definition in like a nice sentence format, but I'm not gonna do that for Kepler's third law. It'd be silly. It makes way more sense to write it out as an equation. And what Kepler's third law says that a planet's elliptical period, which is T squared, is proportional to its mean distance from the sun, R cubed. So one more time, T is the elliptical period which is just really fancy talk for one year, at least one year for Earth, because that's how long it takes for the Earth to go around the sun. And then R is not the distance to the sun, because as we talked about in previous videos, if I were to map out the Earth's journey around the sun, it's technically different distances at every point I'm looking at on the elliptical path. But R represents the mean distance which I've also seen been referred to as the semi-major axis, which I assume is true. And if you don't know what that means, it really doesn't matter. We're just gonna treat it like the mean distance or the average distance from the sun. And again, this equation says t squared is proportional. Proportional does not exactly mean equal, but what it does mean is that I'm gonna be able to compare a planet that I know very well, such as the Earth, and I can compare that to other planets using this equation. So for instance, let's say I wanna find the period for a planet whose radius is twice that of the radius of Earth. How would I find such a period? Well, first I would say t squared is proportional to 2r cubed. I have to cube both the two and the r, so in other words, t squared is proportional to 8r cubed. And then since I'm solving for t, I have to take the square root of both sides. The left side will just be t. The left side will be square root of 8r cubed. And now maybe you're stuck at this part, but I'm just gonna tell you this. This r cubed part is the same as that of Earth. And the only thing that's new is the square root of eight. Meaning the period is, I'm just gonna say equal to, I know it's supposed to be proportional, but I'm gonna say equal to anyway, and you can too, most of the time. It's equal to the square root of eight times the period for Earth. So in other words, what did I do? I replaced the square root of r cubed, I replaced that with t, and the reason I'm allowed to do that is because both of these values are for Earth. And we know the period for Earth, we know that's one year. So if I plug in square root of eight in my calculator, I get 2.83. And so if I wanna know the period of this planet that's twice as far away from the sun as the Earth is, we know it's gonna be 2.83 years. That's how long their orbit is in terms of Earth years. Now, by the way, there is another way you can solve this problem. You can also solve it using a ratio, specifically T1 over T2 quantity squared is proportional to radius one over radius two quantity cubed. You can do this as well, and I'm gonna show you how to use this equation for the next problem. So we know that one year on Jupiter, we know that's equal to 11.8 Earth years. And my question is, how far is Jupiter from the sun compared to Earth? And so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, I need to recognize I'm solving for the radius this time, and I can call this radius two, and I'm gonna call the radius for Earth R1, and I'm just gonna set that equal to one. Why one? because I don't know the actual distance, so I'm just gonna call it one Earth unit. And not only am I allowed to do it, this is what's encouraged for anyone taking a physics class. So now filling out this formula I wrote down earlier, T1 is my Earth years, which I know is one. T2 is my Jupiter years, which we said was 11.8. 
R1 is Earth radius, which we called 1, and now we just have to solve for R2, and that will basically give me my answer. So the first thing I should do is I should square the left side, which I can just plug that in a calculator, and I'll get 0 0.00718, and that's enough decimals for me. For the right side, I'm going to get 1 over R2 cubed. Now, if I want to solve for R2, it means I'm going to multiply both sides by R2 cubed. In other words, 0 0.00718 R2 cubed is equal to 1. I then divide both sides by 0 0.00718. So plugging that in a calculator, I'm getting about 139. And then finally, to solve for R2, I need to take the cube root of both sides. In case you don't know where the cube root button is on your calculator, you can also do 139 to the power of 1 third. That's the same thing. And so if we do that, then we'll get an answer of 5.18. So in other words, how far is Jupiter from the sun? 5.18 times that of Earth. And I'm not looking for like a number in meters or anything. I just wanted to compare it to Earth. And it's five times farther away. And so that's going to do it for this video. I encourage you to find more videos like this one online or other websites or whatever. Just try more practice problems. It will make more sense, I promise. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.